welcome everyone. It's great to have you. We are doing today part four of how to make millions with your medical spa. And we are going to be discussing chapter 11, which is all about how to build a high performing guest relations team, or as you might know them as receptionists, right? So we like to call them guest relations. So there's a lot that goes on in that department that we're going to talk about today. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we see with that department is usually people hiring entry-level people into that position, expecting them to do great things, because really it's a management position almost, and then they end up failing and they have that revolving door that keeps going on and on and on. So what we want to emphasize today is the importance of this position and why you should really be hiring talented people for that guest relations. Well, it's not one of those positions you can just do. Do you have a That's heartbeat? Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you'll work. Come on. <laughs> no, like, it's not one of those. Not, not one of those. Mm -hmm. Or the other big mistake I find usually is they hire college students, which mm -hmm. I have nothing against that, of course. But if you are going to have one college student, then you might as well have somebody who's looking right. at it as a career. Because what happens when you hire a college student for that position is you're hiring, it's like getting married but knowing you're going to get divorced because yeah. they're going to leave and do their own careers, right? Yeah. So I don't understand why business people usually do that, but that's what we're going to address today, how you can avoid these costly mistakes and actually set up that department for mm -hmm. success. It would be a nice idea though to hire a college student who is going into a business degree yeah. because then you know promotion with internal is yes. probably number one key things for a great spa director. That would be great. Yeah. Good idea. Oh. Yeah. So we have our team here with us. We have two Sarahs but we renamed one of them. <laughs> her name is Austin now. We're going by her middle name. So she's manning our Instagram and then we have our famous Sarah, <laughs> infamous. <laughs> infamous, and she's managing YouTube and Facebook and Zoom, Zoom. and keeping YouTube, us on Facebook, track. Instagram, yeah. I think if if your letter is a if your name is a four letter name, you're you're good. To you're go in here. that is you're right. In here. Management, Dory. We can only handle four letters. <laughs> Dory, Tara, Sarah, Sarah. Anything That's over it. four letters, we cannot spell. Nope. <laughs> nope, we just can't do it. It's just too much work. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to be here live. And in case you don't yet, I want to remind you, you can get Dory's book on Amazon, um, How to Make Millions with Your Medical Spa. We've been go. shipping a lot of we books have, lately. We have been. So make sure you go get yours. And then definitely leave us a review. I mean, this book will change your life, so it's definitely worth the couple of seconds to leave a review it will be so beneficial for right. us yes absolutely and for, it'll be beneficial for you. for you because you have a great book oh. <laughs> luckily it's not on the screen <laughs> okay so we, what's new what's new so we have our millionaire circle seminar Woo that's going we virtual. just announced our winner by the way we i did see you recording that earlier yeah did we post it yet our winner yes tatiana one from tatiana. canada Wow, congratulations, Tatiana. You're going to love the seat that we gave so you for the Millionaire excited. Circle. So that's going to be virtually, and it actually starts next Monday. Yes. So I'm super excited. Am I ready? You are. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, am I? <laughs> we have the Meet the Expert shows. Uh, we have so many people that have reached out and asked to be on the Meet at the Expert. Yeah. So, like, we are got people scheduled all the way to the end of March. So just getting them it's in. It's a good thing. Yes. And you can view that on YouTube. If you haven't had a chance, make sure when you're on our YouTube channel, you ring that bell because Dory is constantly shooting educational videos to help you. So you want to get notified every time that she is doing that and adding that piece of value for you. We have our Leap Ahead seminar on demand. And then, you know, as always, we like it when our guests comment, share, like, post, and uh, engage with us yes. during the seminar as give well as... Give us thumbs as up. If you can hear us okay, give us thumbs up. We love hearts. Keep them coming. And I see you. Is our TV working now? No, we'll have our producer Aww. drop our logo in there. Okay. On the production side. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than having TV commercials. That's true. <laughs> All right. Um, you ready? 
I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All about the guest relations. Okay. So, Dory, can we start by defining the guest relations person's role mm -hmm. and what should we be expecting from them? Yes. Yeah, so, we can spend an hour just on that, actually. <laughs> Um, I just want to remind everybody, those of you who are members with us, there is a position description inside the guest relations manual. And the question that Tara just asked me, the answers are actually in here with the position description. And if you don't have it, then you really need to get your hands on it. But when we're talking about hiring a person for the guest relations team, that person, first of all, needs to one look good right because we're in the image business so that first impression when somebody uh, whether they're calling so they have to be great communicators when they're checking in they have to look the part right and they have to be able to convince people to do certain things when they call and the first thing they should be able to convince them to do and that's to reserve the consultation so they need to be sellers, they need to be outgoing, they need to be happy, jolly kind of people. They can't be timid, they can't be afraid of their shadows. They need to be open and outgoing. So usually if you were to pick a behavioral style for that profession, that seat in your medical spa or spa, they need to be more so on the socializer side. They can't be drivers, right? They can't be like, Attila the Hun. They can't be thinkers because then it takes them forever to do anything. They can't be mediators because then, you know, they think everybody is their friend and they just don't get much done. But the socializer, on the other hand, is the person with the bubbly personality that's a great communicator, that's a visionary. That's the kind of person I would want as my guest representative, guest relations representative. And I like that part when you do it in our leap ahead when we're normally in person and you mm -hmm. do it, like really understanding where your team is and how they best work with each other mm -hmm. because that role you have to have someone that supports the whole team. So yes. like they have to be able to work great with their teammates, with mm -hmm. their managers, and even as well as the guests. Yes. So it's a very key spot. It is. It's and huge. It is. And they have to be able to bounce and juggle, juggle multiple. I, I look at it more as like almost a director position because mm -hmm. they are directing the flow of everything that goes on within your facility. So, you know, they have a lot to do. They're answering the phone, they're checking people in, they're checking people out, they're wearing all these different hats. Uh, they have a lot of responsibilities and they need to be able to own that position and be able to handle the variety of things that are gonna be coming at them you know, from the manager to the team to the guests, you have a lot of things going on. So it's very difficult for me to imagine someone that's younger or, you know, we're talking 18, 19 in that role because frankly, you're not really setting them up for success. Uh, and you need somebody a little more mature that understands the guest experience, that understands what we're trying to accomplish and then, you know, go from there. But really, there's a lot. My main thing for this position is to take uh, people that are calling in and then converting them into clients and then to really think of this position as revenue generators rather than order takers. That's our famous phrase for this. The last thing you want is just an order taker in that position. We want them to be totally aware of what we can do from that chair that they're sitting in or standing that desk they're standing at and be able to convert that's really the heart of that operation that you have and if your heart is not working properly and it's not manned by people that can pump the blood through the place then you're not going to survive very long right well and that's knowing how they add value to the team you know it, 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 I agree with you. It's hard for someone who hasn't come from an industry of working, say, a college student, to know how to meet goals, how to achieve them. Mm -hmm. So it is a well, key role. But, but that's why they don't have it. I know. <laughs> right. But that's why I'm saying what you're talking about, having someone yeah. of expertise and a little bit higher than college. Yeah. So now let's talk about some of the types of personalities for this role. Um, you mentioned image earlier, you mm -hmm. know. What's your concept? My, my favorite for? place actually to recruit for this position, and I'm sure if you've been around our community, you've heard me mention this before, 
my favorite place to recruit for guest relations is the department store makeup counters and skincare counters frankly if you just get that kind of quality person because let me tell you why they make good guest relations number one is usually they look good they're outgoing so they're grabbing people as they walk by they're giving them samples try this lipstick so they're already outgoing so you don't have to do a lot of whole training for that um, and then they're very sales driven because when you work at a makeup counter in a department store let me tell you that's a tough job because if they don't meet their goals not only do they not make the money they deserve but we had someone at the leap ahead who was actually a general manager for many department stores and she's like they actually made less money <laughs> if they didn't meet their goals so it's a really it's like a pressure uh, producing job so when you recruit someone like that from that environment and you put them in your environment they're more likely to succeed than just bringing somebody who's just a customer service relation kind of person so I love 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 recruiting from there and I often tell our members you know if you really want to find somebody good I would go to the mall I would stand in the back watch all these makeup skincare people behave how they're behaving are they going to someone are they attracting people are they smiling are they energetic do they have a positive energy and aura about them and I would spot them and then I would go and start a conversation maybe buy a thing of lipstick uh, talk with them see how they handle me as a consumer and then I'm just gonna simply give them my card and use my famous phrase I'm looking for someone just like you right right and then you hand them the card and guess what they're gonna call you mm -hmm. so you didn't you were not unprofessional and recruit directly you're, you're being nice and professional about it uh, I'm expanding my business I'm looking for guest relations people we're in the medical spa industry or spa industry if you know anyone please have them give me a call and I just recruited the best people for my business. But you know what's funny is I have said this to people. Millions of and, times. And if you ask somebody, is this who you're recruiting? No. What do they do? They go put an ad on Indeed, put an ad on Craigslist, Zip Recruiter, whatever, and wait for somebody to come in. The key here, you guys, is recruiting. You have to go out, find those gems, and bring them into your business, especially for that position. I mean, it's like mining. The, the gems are not going to just jump out That's of your, right. your pan. You can't just stand diamonds. there and hold it. And here comes all the diamonds just jumping yeah. in. You have to go work for it, right? So speaking of diamonds, do you know that they have now, uh, what was I watching? There's this morning show on. I don't watch hardly ever any morning TV, but this is one show I like to watch with Jane Polly, the Sunday show. What's it called? sunrise or something anyway it comes on at nine o'clock and they had a special about diamonds and how they were showing how usually people go mining diamonds uh -huh. and they found this uh, artificial way to make diamonds and they were showing it on the show it was amazing and they're saying that those diamonds you can't even diamond experts can't tell the difference wow. between the real diamonds and these diamonds that they're actually they're like baking almost in the wow yeah it was amazing actually I need to look into them maybe I can get me 10 carat diamond <laughs> <laughs> or a big necklace <laughs> but anyway talking about diamonds there you go it's Valentine's what the heck yes. Hope maybe some of our guests got diamonds for Valentine's. Yeah, tell us. If well, you I got a diamond, know. tell us. Share your photos give, give of it, your Give gifts. us one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly didn't get any diamonds. As a matter of fact, I didn't even go out. <laughs> I didn't get diamonds either. I wish I would have. Did you guys get diamonds? <laughs> <laughs> I am a diamond. Oh, in the oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> change your name to diamond yeah oh no let's not do that <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna get back into the book here 
so you gotta, you gotta take you some side turns. You have to laugh, and you know that's what makes this so enjoyable and memorable mm -hmm. for our guest and for us. That's right. So, Dory, can you tell us some of the big mistakes that you see some of our owners making when hiring or regarding this position? Yes, uh, actually. There are a few big mistakes that we see often. One is they don't really do a performance-based compensation. So again, they see this position as a low entry position. They usually only pay them whatever least amount of hourly rate and call it a day. Well, there is no when you do that, there's no motivation. Like where's the motivation when the phone rings for me as a guest relations representative to actually pick up the phone? and do everything I can to convert that caller into an appointment or into a consultation if I'm going to get paid the same amount no matter what. Do you think I'm going to hurry up and answer the phone on two rings? Do you think I'm going to do everything I can to get that consultation? Do you think I'm going to do everything I can to upgrade treatments maybe when they walk in or make some other recommendations? Do you think I'm going to do my best when I check out to make sure they leave with the retail products? I don't think so. And if you think that way, you, you're, you're not thinking straight. <laughs> so you need to shift that mindset to have a performance-based compensation model. So my suggestion to you and your takeaway from this little question here, which by the way is a great question, is the opportunity to give them to earn more money the more value they bring to your business. So I would set a target for them for how many consultations I want from brand new clients. I want to know how many upgrades or how many referrals or how many reviews or how many video testimonials they got. I want to know how many VIP memberships did they sell. So if we assign performance measures to where we know we want you to produce. They, they know that, they have a target. And then they know what consequences could be attached to lack of performance. So you're giving them the opportunity to make more, the more value they bring. But if they don't, you definitely don't want that person to just sit and warm up the seat. So those are the things that we often find as a mistake that people make. So it starts really right there with the hiring process, by the way. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in upcoming uh, things, but if you don't set them up for success, then they're not going to succeed. So you mentioned some of their goals. Dory, what's some targets that you recommend that they should have? Yeah, so definitely the one, some of the ones, the most important one to me is identifying a brand new client from a repeat client. And if we focus on every brand new client, so if you run some reports, figure out how many brand new clients you usually get, and then how many of those brand new clients we wanna get a consultation out of them. And I'm talking about, remember, the head to toe consultation, not the a la carte consultation. I'm talking like we discussed in past chapters with the guest consultation. So. Those are the kind of targets I want to set for them so they are aware. Like I would walk in when we were doing on-sites, I would walk in and watch the guest relations team and I would ask them, you know, what are the goals for the month? How much revenue are we supposed to be generating? How much in service? How much in retail? How many new clients are we getting? How many referrals are we asking for? And I usually uh, am faced with this blank look like, what the heck are you talking about? What do you mean? How many? I, I don't know. Like, they should know. They should know. Because if they don't know, then you're not going to be able to reach. Do we have a malfunction? We have a malfunction real quick. Oh, okay. May I borrow the expert? Well, wait, we have a techie. <laughs> Bye, Tara. I'll, I'll carry you. You carry on, <laughs> I'm sure they are in confident hands. Oh, that's funny. So something is not working. Is your Instagram still working? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! All right, people on Instagram. So it looks like either YouTube or Facebook or one of those is uh, coming down. We like to go live on everything. So in case uh, we are having a little hiccup here, so forgive us. So anyway, that's the, the first thing they should have a target for. And then the other thing as far as targets for the guest relations team is the entire process for the checkout. 
and what are we trying to achieve as far as the retail number. Now, I don't want to put all the pressure on the guest relations team for as far as checking out, but it should be a combination effort between your providers and then the guest relations. So the providers are to do the recommendations, but then the person checking them out should ensure that the products go away with them. Now, we do have a very nice compensation model for the guest relations team where it's a compensation mix where they would get paid an hourly rate and then when they reach certain targets like service, retail, referrals, all the KPIs I just mentioned, remember we talked about key performance indicators? So when they reach all these, let's say you're paying them, let's just use a number, $15 an hour, then you wanna give them the opportunity to make more the more they value, they bring value in. So everything should really be based on performance. And you should want to reward people on performance. Like our new Sarah, who just joined our social media and marketing team, so she's getting paid her hourly rate, but then I also want to reward her further for bringing value, increasing followers, doing engagement posts, things like that. So you see, you want to give your team the opportunity to earn more when they produce more. And that's no different than whatever position you have in. Because the last thing you want is to have people that are going to just clock in for dollars. You're trading minutes for dollars. That is like the kiss of death, you guys. It's just not a very good place to be. Now, if you have this program, again, the guest relations program, um, on this USB, you have what we call the three C's, and that's call management, check-in, and check-out. And it's an entire training program where I teach your team not only how to do the position, the scripts, and all the things, but also the mindset and how to take responsibility for what it is that they're hired to do. But if we don't take the time to truly explain that to them and show them the way, then we're not going to be able to do a very good job. You're just gonna be average. And that's the last thing you really want. So um, anyway, if we're not, that's okay. We can always post it later. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't worry about it. So anyway, every once in a while you get some technology problems. A little glitch in the system. In the system, so yeah. Okay, so those are the, the challenges and some of the things that you should look for as far as setting targets with your team and making sure that they're gonna perform for you at the level that you expect them to perform. So we always try to teach scripts and key phrases. Uh, they can use some of the phrases. I mean, we have the manual, which mm -hmm. is the nice part because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, can you share with some of our viewers what are some of your favorites? Yes, oh, I have so many. Um, you know, it's funny because it's so simple. Once they learn these phrases, then they're able, am I not on? Oh, I have all kinds of problems today. Yeah, no, I'm not on. My, my battery died, I think. Oh. <laughs> so, You're on here, Dory. <laughs> yeah, so listen, uh, our videographer and producer left because I finished taping today. And we're like, oh, you can leave. We can handle the book gathering. And what happens? We let them go and wrong. <laughs> we're going to yeah. keep them next time. Yeah, this is definitely not charging. Sure, not... Yeah, so, okay. But at least no they can hear us on the... Okay. I'll just have to scream. <laughs> <laughs> at least we can laugh about it. All yes. right. What was the question again? So oh, your phrases. scripts and phrases, <laughs> those are your favorite pieces, yeah, right? Yeah, let, let's not die. No. <laughs> Actually, one of my favorite is when you're trying to reserve an appointment with someone, instead of asking, like, are you interested? Do you want to do this? 
Well, those are the wrong questions to ask. Instead, you can say a phrase like this. Well, let's go ahead and reserve that for you. It's just the word let's, right? Let's go ahead and reserve that for you. It kind of solves all the opportunities that they would need to make a decision because we're just assuming they're going to go ahead and do this. So that's one. And the other one that I really love is the most popular treatment is often, you get phone calls, but people don't really know what they want. Let's say they call up and they want a facial, and you have they have no idea, and the last thing you want to do is name every facial you have on the menu. So then as a guest relations, you can say, oh, well, what is it that you would like to gain out of the facial? Oh, I want more elasticity or whatever, anti-aging. And you say, oh, well, that's great, because the most popular facial for that is and you're done you, because everybody wants the most popular thing and that's when you go to a restaurant what do yes. you ask i'm always asking this by she the way really what, does. what's the most popular uh, dish you have here or menu item that you have because you want to have the most popular thing because you know it's probably good right more right. likely so that would be another one um a couple of only one word that makes a big difference and that's how to ask for a credit card when you're doing a reservation so these are all things that you can use by the way while you're on the phone during call management and you're able to say like many people though surprisingly enough still don't ask for credit cards at the time of the reservation and that's not very smart you need to ask for a credit card when you make a reservation and when you ask for a credit card, your team usually fumbles the ball because they don't know how to ask and they don't know the right verbiage. So it, it makes it uncomfortable and often the person ends up saying, well, I don't want to give you a credit card. Why should I give you a credit card? Blah, 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 blah. You don't want that situation. So to simplify asking, let's say you did the whole presentation you've decided Monday afternoon at four o'clock is the time that's best for them, then all they have to do is say, okay, great, Sarah, all I need is to know which credit card you would like to use to confirm your reservation. That's it. It's not like I, I, I'm asking you for it. It's like, I just need to know which <laughs> credit card. <laughs> and that simplifies the whole process makes it so easy and then the other one word that I really like is when when would you like to come and have that treatment it's just it's so simple like these are four things that you could use to really make a difference and it really does make a big difference so we found a replacement battery for your story they don't need hey, to hear you Hello, this is Sarah. Casual Monday around here, excuse me. <laughs> and how do you do it? Oh, here we go. Perfect. That's why you have people. What happened to yours? Sarah, if you just throw two AA batteries from over in the basket, we should be good. All right, let's see. You know what? Had we just not turned them on? No, they were because they were going up and everyone said they could hear and then all of a sudden... All of a sudden they couldn't hear. All of a sudden, halfway my, my through, green they is, lost you. My green light is not working. Okay. So they can't hear me at all? Um, through Instagram they can. All right, so us. we should just ask everybody to go on Instagram. How about YouTube? They can't hear us. No? YouTube is through our Zoom. Oh. Okay, so this is not coming on. Too bad. Okay. So we've talked about the scripts, your favorite words, 
We love your favorite words. I mean, I use them all the time too yes. when I'm doing coaching and training. So let's go to the check-in process, which mm -hmm. is, you know, obviously the step that starts the whole guest experience, right. the checking in. What are mistakes to avoid and how can we overcome them for oh, the check-in I can I can tell you stories about that. Oh, it's so funny. It, it, it's the little things. It's called class, right? It's being classy. When somebody walks in, what should you do? You should stand up and say welcome and smile. It's that simple little gesture that makes such a difference in that first impression as people coming in and saying, your name please? Oh, it's Tara. Yes, Tara, we've been expecting you. I mean, what a welcome that is. If I walked in, and well, you should recognize me if I'm a repeat client, first of all, but if it's a brand new client just walking in, and you stand up, and you say hello, welcome, and you smile, your name please, oh, it's Tara, Tara Lampkin, oh, welcome Tara, we've been expecting you, what a... Like, makes me doesn't feel, that gives like, me hearts and butterflies, oh, makes me yeah, feel so amazing. But tell me the last time somebody greeted you like that, seriously. Does your you team can. does your team do that? And if they don't, they should. They should. I was doing an on-site, you know, pre-COVID, and I was talking to this group of people. This was a medical practice slash med spa together. And I was telling them exactly what I just told you. I want you to stand up when somebody walks in. I want you to smile, say welcome, ask for their name, and say, we've been expecting you. That's it. So I get this person sitting in front of me, and she looks at me and she says, well, that's awkward. I'm like, it's awkward? What the? <laughs> yeah, it's that. awkward because it's classy? <laughs> so let's be like Walmart then. <laughs> I remember that. You, you know, it's so simple to be kind and classy and welcoming and warm and fuzzy but if you don't do that then you're just gonna be like everybody else and we're talking about being different here we're talking about differentiation we're, we're talking about a great guest experience from the minute they walk in to the minute they walk out but if we don't do these things and set the stage for the experience from the minute they walk in then we're not going to be fulfilling their needs like we would if we're starting off with oh yeah your next appointment is here she's the lady with the it's a color you can't even think it's like gold color brown <laughs> it's like this goldish brownish not quite sure <laughs> whatever color that is <laughs> sure <laughs> so you can't do that but I've been called that I've been called the lady with the red sweater the lady with the blue jacket I've been called treat your clients when they're going to give you thousands of dollars. That's not acceptable. So those are some of the things that they really should do right away from the check-in process, that first impression. So perfect. So we talked about the first impression is so important, especially for new clients. How can we deliver that wild check-in experience for existing and repeat clients? Well, first they need to do the homework, and we call that the daily success planning meeting, right? So you need to be able to identify who are brand new people and who are the repeat clients. You should really be aware of who's coming in for the day. And if you're not aware, that means you're winging it, and winging it is not a good plan. So that's why we encourage people, and we talk about the daily success planning meeting all the time, because that's truly planning your success for the day. So if we know who's brand new and who's a repeat, then we can prepare for them appropriately at the check-in because there's different processes for a brand new person versus a repeat person, right? You should have different processes anyway. So the brand new person is the person that you're going to do the, in, the longer intake form, you're gonna prepare them for the consultation, you want to get them something to drink, you wanna escort them to the consultation suite, those are all the things that you need to do. And it shouldn't be, and I've been in places, believe me, when I was doing all the on-sites, 
uh, I was standing one time at a reception monitoring, just watching things. And the person walks in to check out, actually. And the person at the front desk says, are you a member? Like, what the? You should know whether I'm a member or not at checkout. Don't ask me if I'm a member. What have you been doing the whole time? You should know <laughs> what right. the heck kind of client I am. You don't ask them, are you a member? You need to be saying, I notice that you are a member or I notice you're not a member. At least now you know that you're addressing them appropriately. But if you don't do the daily success planning meeting and prepare for who's new and who's a repeat, recognize the repeat and welcome extra good, the brand new person and put them through your process, then you're not going to make that great retention that we want out of visit, visits that you have. And then what about when you walk in that first impression mm -hmm. of the front, the mm -hmm. team, that, what is your opinion of that? There are so many mistakes I see there. It almost looks like an office sometimes. Mm -hmm. You've got the printer and the credit card charger and the files and this. I mean, what am I coming into? That should not be. It should be nice and clean and organized and with your real orchid sitting at the desk. And the only thing you should have is maybe a point of purchase item that you want them to buy at checkout and maybe your menu is on the side. That I mean, it needs to be nicely organized. They're walking into a medical spa or a spa. It needs to be nice. Uh, I was doing a training earlier today actually for the Empire Medical Training and it was about how to convert it from a medical practice to a concierge medicine and to med spa combined. And one of the things I was laughing at is no matter which doctor's office you go into, what do you see in the lobby? The rows of chairs lined up on the parameter of the lobby. And then you have the glass between you and them and they shut it. So you're like a prisoner sitting there in the lobby. It's like, what the heck kind of impression is that? You don't want that. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand about all your HIPAA laws and all this, I get it. But there are ways to address them, to make a better first impression, instead of making me sit there in a lineup <laughs> waiting to be called. <laughs> it's just not a pretty sight. So I want you to go into your reception area with brand new eyes. Now I know a lot of you have nice places. I get it. I'm just talking to the people that don't right now. But if you have a nice boutique with some products, you, the place smells amazing. You have the right lighting, the right music. I'm walking in. I feel great. Guess what? I'm already expecting my experience to be great. But if I walk into the dungeon, Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you gotta make the point. It has to look nice, right? right? Well, that and the team's gotta look nice. Oh. I've been to some places and it was like Walmart thrift store day. They were just mix matching everywhere. There was no yeah. consistency. It's sad. Dory, yeah. we have a question. Lisa wants to know how many seats should be in, in the waiting area. As possible. <laughs> You really, your waiting area should not be the way, I mean, that's just a welcoming center. It's not a waiting area. You should have another area. It's called the transition. It needs to be someplace else. So your boutique should be in the front, maybe with just two little seats or maybe a little bench. We are not there to have them sit. We don't want them to sit. We want them to walk around and shop. We want them to look at products. The last thing I want you to do is warm up the seat. No, they need to be up checking things out. And then when we're ready to take them in, then we escort them into the transition lounge. We get them something to drink. We give them the paperwork. They can do it. And now you're doing a nice experience. Now, some people may tell me, but I don't have a transition lounge. Okay, you can create a nice, cute little seating area. And if you reserve your appointments right, the last thing you want is for people to sit down and waiting on you. That's not acceptable. As a matter of fact, that was one of my pet peeves I was talking about today in the concierge medicine class I was doing. 
having you sit there for an hour waiting for people to come and get you. Like, what the heck is that? That's unacceptable. You need to respect my time. I need to respect your time so we can both come together and have a great experience together. That's what we're talking about. And the more enjoyable the experience is, the more that I'll recommend my family, my friends. So you'll For get sure. more guests and more testimonials. That's right. And you make more money and they're happy and everybody wins. So um, I know we offer a system for this position, Dory. So some of the tools um, they should be using, can you go over those with us So again? not only is our technical, <laughs> not only are we having technical difficulty, but we have communication difficulty. <laughs> and she's not the one that was speaking for four hours earlier today. I was. <laughs> I'm just getting so choked up with what you're saying. I'm just like almost to cry over yeah, here. Right? <laughs> Okay, what was the question? Tools? Okay. <laughs> the tools that we offer for this position. Oh, poor Sarah, she probably thinks we're crazy. <laughs> you want some water or are you dying? I'm not dying yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so there are some tools that are part of the 3 C system. And those tools that the guest relations needs to take care of are your intake forms, and then your, <coughs> excuse me, your guest recipe forms that they need to handle at the end. So if we have a brand new person coming in, we're going to give them the long intake forms, right? So they can prepare for the consultation. And if they're a repeat, you're going to give them the short intake form. So it doesn't take quite as long because you already know them and you know they're on a customized program or not. So it's simpler. But then on the checkout end, <clears throat> now you got me going. <laughs> On the checkout side, we have a form called the guest recipe form. And the guest recipe form is designed for your providers to write on it what is the next appointment I'm supposed to have and what home care products am I taking with me. So that becomes your order form from the providers to your guest relations team. And we teach <clears throat> that no one should be able to check out unless that guest recipe form is filled out and turned in to the guest relations team. That's the only way you're going to ensure that the team is doing their job and making the recommendations and that the guest relations team knows the communication between them and us. That's going to stop from you coming up to the front desk and say, oh, I know she paid for 20 units, but we ended up doing 40, and you're saying that in front of everybody. That should not be. That should not be at all. And what happens is if you leave it to that, if the provider leaves or didn't come to the front desk to reiterate the upgrades that happened in the treatment room, you just gave away a lot of free treatments, and that's terrible. That could cost you so much money by not having the team responsible to fill out that recipe form. Because not only does it have on it the future appointment, the retail products, but it should also indicate what upgrades happen in the treatment room so you can adjust the charge at the checkout. So all these little logistical things are so important to really focus on and make sure that the team adheres to those uh, policies and procedures that you have. <clears throat> so yeah, those are the things that you really need to have. Again, if you don't have this program, you guys, this is like worth its weight in gold. I mean, I don't care whether you buy it or not. I'm just trying to make your life easier. But if you're a member, again, you have access to all this. If you're not a member, you should become a member. But if you don't want to become a member, I don't know why, you should at least get this product off because it will make your life so much easier and it will make you a ton of money if you apply what's in it. And I have to tell you from coaching calls with our members, they love it. And mm -hmm. it's one of the first things that they want to jump in and yeah. dive in right away because they realize from listening to you how valuable this yeah. position is to their company. Absolutely. And it's so easy to take this tool mm -hmm. and put it right into your existing practice, your mm -hmm. med spa. 
it's not like we're having to redo the whole thing. Yes. It's just easy it's very tweaking. Simple. It's very simple. Yeah. And very easy improvement. Like, that's what you call the low hanging fruit mm -hmm. that you like to talk yes. about. We love so low hanging if, fruit. If you don't do this, you guys, then you're just working too hard because if you get that department to be humming, just they know their stuff, oh, there's no stopping you. Seriously. And it feeds to the team. I love it when you have a good guest relations, the rest of the team, I mean, they're just referring, recommending, and it's like this perfect harmony. harmony. Yeah, it's like singing in a choir. Singing in the choir, hallelujah. Mm. So, Dory, today you did a training <laughs> on how to convert your new medical practice to a concierge yes. medicine, which was, it was, like you said, you're the one that's been talking all day, and I'm the one over here, can't hardly talk now. <laughs> she, she was typing. <laughs> <laughs> she was fielding questions. Yes. So um, you've discussed the importance of enrolling people into the VIP membership mm -hmm. program. Can you talk a little bit about how should be, who should be responsible to enroll people into the membership mm -hmm. in a medical spa yeah. or a concierge? Yes, oh, and all of them actually, yeah. or even a day spa. So a lot of times people think that you know the providers should be promoting the memberships and they should everybody really should be but to me the guest relations are the people that are going to close it right so as a matter of fact um, circles of wellness last week we did a call with them and here's the advice i gave them because they were not presenting you have to present to sell if you don't present you don't sell and i told them to create a nice little table near the reception area, not at the reception, because you can't really sell memberships at the reception. You have people checking in, the phone is ringing, people checking out, it's an awkward situation, plus you have this barrier be, be, between you and the client. Not a good situation, and most front desks have this stupid high counter space, and it's like you're reaching over it, not, a, not the best situation. So what I would recommend, is create a nice poster on a beautiful easel, maybe with a round table, with a skirt, tied, look really nice. And you, when people check out, then all you have to do is something like this. Say, you know what, Sarah? We are doing a register to win. Now that you've completed your experience, come over here and let me enter you. We're going to give away a half a day of spa treatments from circles of wellness. Come over here and let me check you in. And I'm guiding them, you know, like how you just, come on, little girl, and you guide them over <laughs> to the table. And you, you begin to register them, right? And while they're there, then you can say, you know what, I was looking at your record while you were in your treatment, and I noticed, right? That's another key two words. I noticed that you are not a VIP member. So let me take this opportunity, since you're here, to explain to you the benefits of why you should become one. Because you're already coming here at least three times a month, so you might as well come four times a month for only this much, or whatever the program is, right? And it's your opportunity to take home from that front desk, to take home to register to win, to explain the membership, to closing the sale. And you do that as a guest relations person that's your job and you take them to the side and you start enrolling people into your vip program but see the thing is you're too busy to think of these things we're not that's all we do we think about how we can help you make money and if you take these strategies that are so well thought out and you implement them you're going to start seeing great results isn't that like such a good idea? And it's so simple. It is. It, it really <clears throat> is. And I love the idea. And the thing is, is like, not many people think about it. But well, they don't. They don't have they time don't, to think. They're, they're too busy. Think. They're way too busy. Yeah, they don't have time to think. It's or, not, I mean, if they had the time to think, you might sit down and think about it. Right. But if you don't have the time because you're on that hamster wheel, when are you going to think about it? In that the, the, the owner's in the room all day, and they don't know yeah. what's happening while they're in the room up right. front, and people are just coming and going. Yeah. And Miss, missed opportunities all day long. There are so many missed opportunities that you're mining, but you're not looking for the diamonds. You're going through the gold, you're going through the dirt, but you're not finding those diamonds that we were just talking okay. about earlier. And diamonds sometimes are hard to spot because they're they're coals, they're not, you know, they're rocks. <laughs> they don't look like diamonds. 
So we need to find out where are those gems that we can take, polish up, and turn into diamonds for your business. That's what we're talking about. So would you say looking for diamonds, would you say a best practice is to record the phones so that you can listen to them later and oh. be able to catch those pieces where you're, they're maybe saying, hey, we're not getting consultations. We're not, the, the phones aren't converting to appointments. Well, the phones are great for the call management part, but I'm talking about even, that's one thing we also talk to wellness, uh, circles of wellness about is that the manager sometimes sits in an office doing paperwork. That's not a good place for a manager to be. A manager needs to be out, ears and eyes, seeing what's going on in the place. Just like if you're a coach for a football game or basketball or whatever, the coach is not in the office. They're on the sideline. They're there coaching their team. So why would you be in an office? If you have administrative work to do, you better do it before or after. But the rest of the time, you need to be out correcting and coaching and training. As a matter of fact, that's going to be, I think, our next module. But if you don't do that, if you're not out and about, you're going to miss out on great opportunities that you have. And these are key. Those are really, that's the difference between succeeding and failing. Right. And that's where the coach on the sidelines, they're calling lights, right. they're, they're jumping in, they're out. time out. Yeah. You know? If you're there as a manager, you can walk up and say, oh, you know, let me have, add some value here, like adding pieces to it. Yeah. So. Or them selling even. Like if I'm going to teach somebody how to enroll someone into my VIP, I'm going to go and show them how it's done. But you know what's sad is like we have owners that still don't know the pride system. It's like, what the heck are you paying for? We have owners that are, don't know how to enroll somebody into memberships. So really it's your responsibility to first learn all this stuff and then you teach the team how to implement it so um joy we have some questions that are coming in but i wanted to ask you how much training and what training tools are available for the guest relations department to go through before they start working on their own well i mean if you have your own training material that's all fine and dandy but if you don't again that's what we were talking about with the program that we have but it really takes about two weeks to train a guest relations team because not only are you training them on all the logistics of actually doing the job like answering the phone handling the software system making the appointment doing this and that but they're also having to learn how to generate revenue for the business and the nice thing about this program actually it has a test in the back that allows you to test their knowledge and see how they're going to answer the phone how fast can they reserve an appointment how are they going to check people in how are they going to check people out how do they make recommendations how do they enroll a person so all these things that's a lot so at least initial training of a couple weeks and then of course it's continued training on end until they just become so good it's unconscious incompetent it's uh, unconscious competency so they're right away they're doing all these things without even thinking about it. and then would you I know we for, do it for our members where we call their office mm -hmm. and test and see how they're doing would you recommend as an owner or manager Absolutely. that you do that to your own team and you should do this all the time okay you should be checking mm -hmm. calls all the time secret shopping secret shopping I love doing <clears throat> that Dory, really quick, we have a new follower that's just started reading your book. Mm. Yes, and he has mentioned that even from chapter one, he had no idea that there were these systems out there to really help. You know, when you mention um, not buying yourself another job, he said he feels like he bought himself a prison and he's <laughs> living in it. Oh my God, that so. was the lobby I was talking about. Yeah, I think know? so. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad he's here. Then I, that, I mean, having the book is a great first step, but you need to go beyond that. If you want to reach success the fastest way possible, you need to go on the site. You need to reserve a success planning session and let us properly introduce you to all the great things we have to help you succeed fast. So, but thank you for joining us, and I'm glad you're reading the book. Welcome. So the questions I have over here, one is Dr. Phillips said earlier, we mentioned about the millionaire circle mm -hmm. and then wanted to know when that is. So it's actually very soon. Yes, next uh, week. It's gonna be next Monday. 
and we're going to be doing it. Dory will be live on every other Monday, so it's going to be for four weeks. And you'll be able to join us live. You'll be able to chat, ask questions. You're getting your um, workbook. your workbook, so you can go right onto our website, and on the top it says seminars in the Millionaire Circle, and get registered for that. Or you're welcome to call our office, and anyone here at the office can help register you for that. And if you're a member, you're getting as part of your membership right yes. now, which is an amazing gift that Dory gave our members. And then our second question was Dr. Davis. Um, he asked, um, where can I just sign up for the membership at? Well, that, so that's, a, that's, an that's an easy, easy question. Yeah. So again, you there's a um, spot on our website, but we would love for you to call here at our office. You can speak to us, either the Sarah's or myself, and we can get you signed right up for our membership. And that way, that'll get you registered immediately for the Millionaire Circle. Um, and then, that's really the best investment you can make in your in yourself and your business. Seriously, right? I mean, the cost of it it's is a, just, it's, it's a no brainer. brainer. Mm -hmm. It really is. You'll lose more money not using our membership, and then sure. trying to spin circles and running in that hamster wheel you always yeah. talk about. Money's just going out that you yeah. don't even realize. You know, it's funny. The gentleman that was just asking the question. Um, there are actually many people that are in that same boat. They just don't realize that a company like ours exists, which is kind of interesting to me because I'm always like seeking out companies to make our business even better. So uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I was wondering how can we be even more visible than we already are to capture more people like you and make them be aware that those kind of programs actually exist. So I'm just... I would love to chat with this gentleman to find out more about what he was doing to try to find companies like this. And this so. reminds me of a call I actually had last week as a client was saying, you know, I'm not sure I can do and afford to do the membership. I have money going out everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talk about that analogy in Leap where they have a bucket and it's got holes. And he's like, I just can't afford one more expense. And I'm mm -hmm. like, think of us as we're the plugs for those holes. So mm -hmm. you are just pouring out in all these <laughs> spots, but we have a system that's going to plug every yeah. single one of those. And, and, and he's like, gonna make the money overflow. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, I never thought about it that way. Yeah. As investing in himself yeah. and his business was yes. actually going to fix other spots. Yeah. So. All right, let's do our shortcuts. Yes. We're almost out of time. How many minutes do we have? Just a few. So our shortcuts for success. Focus on training your guest relations team. Training should include call management, check-in and check-out, inform them of revenue targets and set performance goals, script the approach, role play, test their, them prior to handling your phones, and then inform them of their responsibilities and hold them accountable. Woo-hoo. Sounds Amen. good. Amen. Amen. I Another hope Monday at church. <laughs> Church of Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so next yeah. week, you mentioned earlier, is all about training and coaching the team. Yes, we're going to go over the I care coaching model that we teach, and it's phenomenal. You definitely want to join us for that. And we're almost at the end of the we book. We are. I think we have three chapters three left. Three chapters right? left. So thank you so much for joining us. We will see you in two weeks on a Monday. God bless. Stay inspired. Bye, Bye. now. Thank you.